Broadway quality live entertainment is right in your backyard. Take a look as we shine the spotlight on another production playing on Long Island. It's a privilege and an honor to get to play this part. Um, he has lots of big dreams. He wants to go off to Europe and uh, and travel. He wants to be an architect. He uh, uh, he wants to do things that are bigger than than his town, you know, and bigger than sort of what his his father has done before him. And through life and the things that happen in life, uh, a lot of those dreams got compromised. He makes the choice for the greater good and for the sake of the town and for the sake of his family and the people he loves and. Um, at, that comes at a price with his own with his own heart's desires. Do you know how long it takes a working man to save five thousand dollars? A couple like the, the, the bishops needs a decent place now, now while their while their kids are little. When it first was happening, and I I got the call, and you know I of course was like, oh god, there, it's this iconic role, it's this iconic thing, and what, there's going to be comparisons, and you know I'm not Jimmy Stewart. Um, but uh, I watched the film with John Simpkins, our director, and we had one night where we, we, we got together and we watched it together, and that was sort of it, you know, and we sort of, we got on the same page and sort of was what we were getting from the movie. And then you sort of try to forget it, and, the and as I was saying, the sort of amazing thing about him is that he is this, this everyman. To us. Happy honeymoon. Some honeymoon. Now, now. Well, by now, I thought we might be further away from Bedford Falls than Bedford Falls. What's wrong with Bedford Falls? So we're not approaching the Normandy coast. I play Mary Hatch in the role, the uh, wife of George Bailey. She's the the glue, I think, in a way to you know to the family. And she and George, I feel like, are just so they're paired so well together. And she's when he's down, she's up. And when maybe she's a little bit down or nervous, he's up. And it's just I don't know. It's they're I feel like they're a really lovely couple. <laughs> Okay, okay, listen up, everybody. Um, I've got two thousand dollars here, and and it's my own damn honeymoon money. Now, how much do you need just to tide you over? I feel like no matter what generation it is, someone can relate to it. Um, I think that the, this musical is very apropos for currently the political and social climate right now. <laughs> so um, I think that it means a lot. Um, I know people who are coming to the show who've never seen it, and they're surprised at how relevant it is for today. And I think it was the same back then when they wrote it. Jubilee loans for too little collateral. That is what I'm talking about. The building loan is dangerously overextended. Mr. Potter is, is uh, a very wealthy man. Uh, a bit of a curmudgeon. He would like to control the whole city and the whole the whole area that he lives in and is a bit devious at times just to get what he wants. Uh, like real business, I guess. Just think what you could do with 15,000 a year. 15,000. Whatever you want, just make it. This production is it could be anywhere. I think it is is first rate. I adore everyone in this show. They're perfect and it's been directed beautifully. It is gorgeous to look at. And when you leave feeling like it's Christmas and, and, and your heart is warm and full. Clarence, now is your chance. If you can stop him, you'll be promoted to... To Angel First Class. A bell will ring for me. I am Clarence Oddbody. Um, I am an angel, but an angel who has um, not quite made the grade yet. I've got to save somebody. I've got to do what angels do. And uh, he's just a very um, thoughtful, um, sort of slow, um, wonderful man. But his job has eluded him, and he's finally got a chance to make the grade and earn wings. Wings at the thought, my soul sweet. I do, yes, identify with uh, uh, 
trouble making the grade and um, wa mind wandering and being off in cloud nine. Uh, those are things I do a lot. Yes, so yes, I do. I can understand why you'd want to marry into the Bailey clan, but what did you see in her? Besides beauty, brain, and talent? <laughs> I play Uncle Billy. Um, he's the person who is befuddled and has a bit of a problem with the flask every now and then and you can see me using it from here to there but he is a, a warm kind soul and unfortunately is very absent-minded as, as is pointed out during the show but but you gotta love him yeah the guy which I do I love playing the part Billy oh the hardest to God George I got to the bank I filled out the deposit slip I went up to the teller's window and I didn't have the money oh, George I looked all over the bank Okay, maybe, maybe it fell out of your pocket on the way to the bank, no? <laughs> I don't know. The show kills me because it, it, every night I get to go through this, I get to tell the story and go through his journey, and it just makes you really realize that everything that happens to you, it's happening for you and it's happening for a reason and you're where you need to be. And I think George, George really learned, you know, he gets, to, he gets to rock bottom where he wants to end it all. And at the end, and he emerges from that, the most blissfully hap, happy, grateful man on earth. You know, it's... It's just, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's simple and beautiful.